Get that mate, 40 here. So one of the big differences between the right and the left, the modern and the trad, and frequently the secular and the religious is the permeable self versus the protected self. So the traditional, the religious, the right wing, they tend to conceive the human being as having a permeable self. So as someone of a different race, religion, sexual orientation moves next door or onto the block, someone with a traditional perspective is going to be much more likely to not be thrilled with that because from a traditional perspective right what's going on with you is going to affect me so if you're engaging in sin or if you, you believe incorrect things about god or if you're you know, doing things that are deviant or satanic all right that has a tremendous ability to negatively affect me and so Traditionalists, conservatives, and religious people, they're much more concerned about what's going on, you know, on their block. So this is why conservatives tend to have concentric layers of loyalty. So their first loyalty, first concern is usually with themselves, with their family, extended family, community then just keeps radiating outside of that while people on the left tend to have you know, leapfrogging circles of uh, loyalty. So that's why the traditionalists, the conservatives tends to be much more upset about change, tends to find it much more disturbing, all right, because it uh, has much more possibility of upsetting their equilibrium. So there's a book on just this theme, The Permeable Self, Five Medieval Relationships. That came out in September 2021 by Barbara Newman. So the trad, the, the conservative and the typical religious person is much more medieval than the modern and the secular and the lefty. Right, so people on the left believe much more that uh, through the power of reason we can transcend ourselves, we can transcend their primitive conceptions and their atavistic religious impulses. We can overcome all that and we can become you know, reflexive and uh, self-secure, self-directed, and uh, achieve great things. But back in medieval times, right, there's much more of a sense that uh, whatever's going on with you is going to affect me. So there's a story here about Marjorie. Right, she's in top form during a meal with a bunch of monks telling them that uh, God has put all these good words into her mind. She's so charismatic that one monk who had long despised her has uh, begun to think that maybe she is telling the truth. So he seeks her out, asks her if he will be saved, and if she can disclose his sins to him. He says, I will not believe in you unless you can tell me my sins. So the medieval conception, the trad conception, is much more about we have an ability to read other people's minds. So Marjorie consults with Jesus, and she Jesus gives her the information about what's really going on with this monk, that he's guilty of lechery, despair, and keeping worldly goods. That he can save his soul if he confesses and abandons the secular office he holds. So he asks, asks her for more corroborating detail. Have I sinned with wives or single women? And Marjorie doesn't hesitate. You have sinned with wives. So he's convinced that she's tapped into the Godhead, all right? And uh, he believes that you know, she's fair dinkum. 
and uh, he changes his life for good because of this interaction so from a modern perspective this is absolutely astonishing all right that uh, this this nun could have such an effect but this is fairly common in the experience of mystics so the conception of the self back in the medieval times is very different from what we hold to be the self so it's much more porous meaning permeable you know we are much more vulnerable to interference from both natural and supernatural forces from both the human and the divine both good and ill so this porous selfhood is articulated in the Christian doctrine of co-inherence so that's the notion that three persons the Trinity dwell in one another simultaneously this extends to human beings too so they participate in the mystical body of Christ and in one another so relations between people even in secular contexts such as romantic love right they are permeating each other so there's an ethical imperative with this doctrine right if we're so interconnected then an injury done to one is an injury done to all there's also a troublesome downside person self as self sense of self can dissolve under the pressure of external interference both demonic and divine so that's why the trad tends to be you know, much more concerned about holiness and cleanliness and uh, keeping on the lookout for the forces of decay and dirt and disorder so in the middle ages you'd have demons tormenting a holy woman by having sex in her presence monks would imagine themselves to be pregnant lovers would eat one another's hearts and holy people would have the gift of prophecy about each other's sins but on the other hand they had an emotional spiritual and physical connection that would not be recognizable today right people would felt closer to each other frequently closer to their students or their clergy than to their own families so the condition of the mind can be discerned from the state of the body saint ambrose wrote in the fourth century it sounds very much like alexander technique some people's walk you see the very image of frivolity they look like wandering jesters so hugo of saint victor in the 12th century says that the discipline that regulates the movement of the limbs quells all the disorderly impulses of the mind so alexander technique would say that uh, now what's going on with the body is going to affect the the emotions and the thinking what goes on with the thinking is going to affect the emotions and the body that uh, goes on with the emotions is going to affect the thinking and the body but uh, we're all in it together constantly affecting one another so if you're free and easy in your body then you're going to be free and easy with your emotions and your thinking so Alexander technique has helped free me up from all sorts of layers of unnecessary compression and tension so I'm more at ease with myself and more at ease with other people and more at ease with the curves that life throws me